The next thing we have to discuss is a very important concept in ships, which has to do with stability on the water. So let's draw a diagram of a ship in the transverse direction. So we're looking at the front of the ship, like so, and it's sitting in the water. So the ship has a center of buoyancy, and we're going to say that that point is right there. It also has a center of gravity, which we'll say is above the water, right there. And then there's an imaginary point called the metacenter. And since we're looking at the transverse case, we're going to label this as the transverse metacenter. We can also look at the ship uh, from the longitudinal direction, and there will also be a metacenter for longitudinal. From this diagram, the distance between the metacenter and the center of gravity is called GM, which is nicknamed the metacentric height. If the metacentric height is positive, the moments that develop when the ship is inclined are writing moments, and the ship is stable. If the metacentric height is negative, and therefore the transverse metacenter is actually sitting somewhere below the center of gravity, the moments that develop are upsetting moments, and the ship is unstable. So let's take a look at this. We're going to draw two cases here, and the ships are inclined. So they're rolling about on the ocean, and this is just one portion when they're rolling. Your center of buoyancy is going to be the same in both cases. So the ship is going to seek a new center of buoyancy. But let's say that the center of gravity in this one is located here, but the center of gravity in this one is located here. The center of buoyancy provides an upwards force. The center of gravity provides a downwards force. That's true in both cases. And you can see that the moment that develops in this one is clockwise, where the moment in this one is counterclockwise. And therefore, this ship wants to just put itself back up in the upright position, where this ship wants to continue to roll and will capsize. When the metacentric height is large, the writing moments are also large, and such a ship is said to be stiff. When the metacentric height is small, the riding arms are also small. Such a ship is said to roll slowly and to be tender. From this, you can see that cruise ships tend to design for a relatively low metacentric height so that the ship rolls slowly for passengers. It's more comfortable. Battleships would also have a low metacentric height in order to increase the accuracy of gunfire. However, a low metacentric height makes it more difficult to resist flooding effects. So let's show this in an example. We have a ship where we're going to vary the metacentric height. So we have our center of buoyancy. And then we have our center of gravity, which we're just going to put here for this example. To find the metacenter, we're just going to use intersection lines through the center of gravity and through the center of buoyancy. And so our metacenter, our transverse metacenter, is located right there. So from this diagram, our writing arm is this distance right here. And then we can see if we relocate the center of gravity to a point here, even though our uh, metacentric height is still positive, 
our writing arm is now much larger. Since our writing arm is larger, our ship is said to be stiff, and therefore it wants to return to the upright position very quickly. This is possible because the center of gravity in this example is low in the hull, especially compared to the center of buoyancy, where in this example the center of gravity is higher in the hull, and this can prove to be another problem, not only that the ship returns to the upright position kind of slowly, but if there was flooding, then this center of gravity position would change, as well as the center of buoyancy position, and it might actually happen that the um, GM, even though in this example the GM is still positive, the GM might flip and actually become negative. Therefore, it's almost always a good idea to design for a low center of gravity.